Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining today. I'm Fred Coates, Vice President of Product Marketing, and I'll be joined today by some of my colleagues and esteemed security experts. We're going to talk about securing your most important data. If you consider securing your data, you, you face some very diverse threat actors, and some of them might actually be employees or insiders at your company that, that could make mistakes, or they might actually have some malicious intent. As you sort of look externally, you face you know, threats from uh, competitors, hacktivists, people that uh, perhaps are not as intent on stealing your data or doing as much damage, but then you face criminals, uh, nation states, very serious actors that could really do damage with that data. And so when you think about securing data, it's critically important to think about sort of who that is and, and what they're doing. But it's also to think about the paths of that data. Most data resides in the database, yes, but there are many different paths to get that database. And so it's important to think about the kinds of information you have and what you're doing to protect it. For instance, data today in a database could be a credit card, easy financial theft, we've seen that for quite a long time, but it could also be intellectual property, trade secrets, things that are really critical to your business. It could be data that perhaps doesn't seem that valuable, but it has privacy implications to your customers and partners, or what attackers do today is taking this data, melding it together, and coming up with new and creative ways to monetize that or do damage to the business. So tremendous amount of data, most of it that resides in the database, but we also think about the layers around the database and the paths to get to that data. And to examine that a little bit more closely, I want to introduce David Cross, who's our SVP of SaaS Security, to talk about some of the other things we do around the database to keep customer data secure. Thanks, Fred. Really excited to talk about this. So everyone talks about going, uh, having a defense in depth solutions, but here at Oracle in our cloud, we go beyond that. We go beyond a defense in depth by doing proactive multi-layer cloud security. And what I mean by that is how we impact the entire stack, all the way from the hardware to the application layer, how we proactively and having no dependencies between each layer by having implementing uh, security and detection and monitoring in each and every layer. Everything from physical security in the data centers, you know, to having role-based access at the application layer. We implement these uh, uh, in each and every layer. Now, one of the things that I'm most proud of and very unique, I think, to Oracle is that we don't share the same hosts uh, between customers and our infrastructure. So that an individual stack of our security infrastructure, our internal cloud infrastructure runs on its own stack. We don't run customer VMs on that same stack. So that we don't have the noise between customers, we don't have any risks between infrastructure and customer uh, uh, environments. And this is very, very important to having a defense in depth model. One of the most important elements and something that we hear quite frequently from customers is about encryption, both at rest and in motion. So I'd like to introduce Russ, who's now going to talk a little bit more about encryption, especially in the database layer. Thanks, David. You know, if you look at autonomous database, there's a real reason why the adoption of this service is so rapid and so widespread globally. And a lot of that reason is driven by the built-in security controls. Customers are very, very happy with the automation in terms of encryption, both at rest and in motion. Uh, the ability to have your patches applied for you, and not only applied for you, but applied very, very quickly so that your window of vulnerability between the time something is discovered and the time it's fixed has shrunk to as, as small as it can possibly be, are just incredibly valuable when you're trying to protect sensitive data. But even the autonomous database with all of its security capabilities can benefit from additional security. And the Oracle Cloud offers a couple of services that do enhance that database security. One of those is Oracle DataSafe. DataSafe is included with all of the database cloud services, and its purpose is to protect data privacy and to help you safeguard against misconfiguration. Another service that benefits the autonomous database is the cloud infrastructure vault. The OCI vault protects your database encryption keys and keeps them secure. Let's dig into those just a little bit. We're going to start with Oracle DataSafe. Now, as I've mentioned, DataSafe is included with all your Oracle cloud services, so this isn't something that you have to uh, 
to go out and spend extra money on. It's also available for use on premises and in compute, even, even for third party clouds. But what DataSafe does is it allows you to assess your configuration, check all of those different parameters and settings that are built into your database. And it will tell you if there are places where the way you are doing things is perhaps introducing risk that you might not want to accept. It gives you strategies for mitigation and it lets you get to a more secure configuration. Once you have adjusted your configuration to the level of risk that you feel is appropriate for your organization, data safe shifts modes and now begins to track your current configuration against what you have set as your baseline. So it alerts you and lets you know if you have drift in your configuration. And if you look at where cloud services tend to get breached, Configuration drift is often a large factor in a breach in the cloud. Another thing DataSafe does for you is it looks at your database users and it identifies which users present the highest risk if those users were compromised. Again, looking at typical attack patterns, database breaches almost always involve compromised credentials. Someone logs into the database with passwords and usernames that they have stolen or brute forced or somehow gotten and steals the data. Well, DataSafe helps you identify where your high-risk users are and gives you ideas where you can remove privileges, remove unnecessary capabilities from those users to try and reduce your threat surface. DataSafe monitors activity. It goes out and scans your database and tells you you have credit cards, you have email addresses. It looks for over 125 different types of sensitive data, and it gives you the capability to easily remove that sensitive data from your database and replace it with fake test data, which can be very useful for non-production copies of your database. But again, the purpose of DataSafe is to help safeguard data privacy and guard against configuration drift. Now, also supporting the autonomous database is probably the world's best key management system. And for that, I want to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Frederick Bosco. Frederick? Thank you, Russ. OCI Vault is a Gen 2 natively built key management service. At OCI, we believe as a customer, you not only control the data, but you control the keys that protect your data. That's why we give you a spectrum of encryption options. It starts with Oracle Managed, where you have a simple control on your keys, but you could choose Customer Managed. Within Customer Managed, you can either control the keys created on cloud or the keys created on-premise. OCI Vault is natively integrated to many OCI services, whether you're protecting workloads, that are stored in database or non-database workloads, whether you're protecting your SaaS or IaaS workloads or applications that require data addressed or data and transit production, we covered it for you. OCI Vault is a highly available service and we provide you one of the best SLAs that you find among the cloud key management service. And finally, your keys are stored by default in a highly secure module called HSMs, which is FIPS 142 level three certified. And why it's important? Because your keys never leaves a HSM and that's one of the key compliance requirement for most of you. To conclude, we protect your keys, but you control and own the keys that protect your data. Over to you, Fred. Thanks, Frederick. Uh, great conversation around keys. That's a critical piece of encryption, managing keys, rotating keys, and who accesses the keys. So uh, thanks for that. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about moving to cloud. In particular, a lot of customers have concerns about their data and, and who accesses it. You know, in fact, most organizations believe that security in the cloud can be better than what they can do on their own, but they still have concerns about control and access to their data. So talk more about that. I want to invite back David Cross and continue that conversation. So welcome, David. Thanks, Fred. So I, I guess the question I want to ask is, you know, if I bring my data to Oracle Cloud or one of their clouds, and do all, do all employees at Oracle have access to that data? Absolutely not. 
as we mentioned and talked a bit before, right, we have multiple layers of defense. Some of the examples of those is that how we have our OCNA, we have multi-factor authentication and re restricted bastions. So we have multiple layers, all preventing that all Oracle employees do not have access unless they are permitted to do so. So, you know, I think the term set and forget comes to mind. So like that sounds great out of the box configured, but is there any sort of ongoing checks or validation that, you know, these policies are being enforced? Absolutely. So one of the things obviously is, you know, audits and certifications that we're quite proud of. They're always double checking all of our work and making sure that our enforcements are always working and they're validated. In addition, we have a lot of automation that ensure that we ensures that we actually have uh, segregation of duties and role-based access control that automatically detects, automatically, automatically ensures that uh, no changes are made without authorization and reporting on it consistently. So, you know, back to that concern about moving the cloud that some customers have, it sounds like you have a lot of controls in place, but does moving to a, like, for instance, a SaaS environment mean that as customer, I, I give up all controls to my data? No way. <laughs> it's really quite exciting is that because customers have many choices of additional controls that they can bring in. You know, one of the most popular is, you know, break glass approvals, right? So that customers can have control. Even if they file a service request, they actually have to, or have the ability to actually approving that access, um, you know, to their data or the application. You know, other things are around, you know, the encryption and how customers can bring their own key, you know, into the key vault and elements. So they have a lot of controls that is their choice based on their needs. David, you mentioned encryption keys. So how else is the customer data protected? In the Oracle Cloud, we actually provide encryption at all data layers, whether it's in storage, in the database, or when it's in transit to and from the cloud. So it's, it's important that we protect the customer's data, regardless where it's stored or whether it's in transit. David, you talk about a lot of the steps that Oracle's taken to protect customer data. So what is Oracle doing to ensure this protection? Well, in Oracle, in the Oracle Cloud, we built a lot of technologies, everything from next generation seeing, you know, which is security, incident, and event management, uh, analytics, detection, and using some of the latest, you know, machine learning based tools based on Oracle Labs technology so that we can always detect and identify and automatically react, you know, whenever a new attack occurs in the Oracle Cloud that may be different. So we're always on top of things, we're always looking at proactively, and this has helped to ensure that we protect customers at all layers. Thanks, David. That was great. I think you talked a lot about you know, defense in depth, which is often an overused term, but I think you brought some really good context and meaning to how important that is for an organization as they move to the cloud. Next up, we're going to hear from Haran Patel at Accenture. Uh, Haran's been working with customers to deploy Oracle technologies and cloud security solutions that help them have a successful migration from on-premises environment into the cloud. And he has a lot of great experience from frontline what customers are doing. Welcome, Ron. Thank you, Fred, for having me. Ron, to get started, can you tell us more about Accenture's strategies to help customers secure their cloud deployments? Sure. I mean, one of the key differentiators Accenture has is that we've announced a cloud-first strategy for all our clients. It's a transformational process, we allow it, we use our best practices, we've gleaned from hundreds and thousands actually of migrations to the cloud and different vendors. And we've used that tech, that training and the knowledge and know-how to develop a set of standards and reference guides to help all our new clients transform and migrate to the cloud. Um, the other, the, there's also research divisions that are focused primarily on Oracle cloud security and cloud security in general. And from their research and development work, we've also produced tooling and solution spaces that allow our customers an easier transition and identifying creative con concerns that they have when they migrate up. Ron, can you outline some of the technical and security challenges your customers face with cloud adoption, in particular, maybe the business implications beyond just their IT framework? Yeah, um, you know, each customer client has a different set of challenges based on their sector and in industry and best practices, right? The majority of the challenges I personally have seen our clients face are relating to actually the change and tweak in their business processes they'll have to undertake during that digital transformation, including retooling employee skill sets and usability training to use the new technology stack. In terms of security specifically, you know, customers will have specific regulatory compliance meetings, worrying concerns about financial cost business efficiency, all these factors have to be balanced when we do a deployment or a migration to the cloud. 
Personally, I like to make secure, sure that security compliance doesn't hinder business processes and innovation growth that's gonna be coming part of the migration. Simple example I give people is the, the idea of passwords, right? Too stringent of a password policy just makes it harder for employees to kind of get in, stay in service, and also constantly having to change their password, they get into bad, bad, I would say password hygiene, where they store the passwords or they keep reusing passwords. So ideally with the, one of the benefits I see with Oracle IAM, I turn on multi-factor authentication. And that ensures that we have the right people connecting and it's easier to track who's logging into our systems. So Ron, you mentioned Oracle IAM. Are there you know, specific Oracle sort of cloud security services that your customers are deploying? And I'm, I'm kind of curious, what kind of workloads are those attached? I know with migration, customers move different workloads, you know, in different times, but you know, what kind of security services are you turning off your customers and then kind of what kind of workloads are those attached to? You know, again, it's every client is different, but in general, we'll use IAS, PaaS, and SaaS in multiple cases, right? We do have a larger majority of customers just moving the IAS platform, but we'll have also migrations happening in the PaaS and SaaS side as well. But in terms of what features that are being utilized, we are utilizing all of them. I mean, recent ones, Glove, GovCloud, we're using IAS, CASB, your DBAS solutions, X, including Exadata and Autonomous Database Warehouse, Vault. So all the gambit of potential security solutions are being thought of and utilized depending on the customer's need. In the past, you know, we did several migrations. One success story I can point to is the state of Kansas Keys project. That was a multi-year migration that actually happened with a matter of six months. One of the biggest challenges with that migration was it had to be a state solution that was on-prem and it was antiquated and had to move to the Oracle Cloud Gov regions. Oracle Cloud being FedRAMP really helped the migration because we had to meet very strict MARS E 2.0 requirements. During that successful migration, we were able to migrate some, what we'll call out of end of life versions of IAM and stack and other technology stacks that they continue to use and move them successfully to the Oracle Cloud, as well as maintaining that MARS E compliance for multi-years. Finally, recently, we've noticed that there was a greater demand because of COVID for VPN access. So we again, we're able to quickly turn around a VPN and firewall solution to expand access to government employees during the COVID you know, crisis. Ron, one of the things that uh, you know, we put a lot of focus on is making the autonomous database kind of self-securing, so automating patching and dealing with configuration drift and such. And are, are you finding that or how is that helping you secure your customer's data? You know, migrating security data, it requires what we call data flows, right? So one of the things I like to use, and it's become a standard practice, is to look at the data flows, figure out where the data is coming in and going out to their system. This is how solutions like Autonomous kind of help secure that data. Autonomous can take, takes a lot of manual processes that are normally handled by an IT department and helps reduce security administration costs, as well as automating downtime and reducing odd time and patching the always on encryption at rest for like TDE and TLS on data motion is definitely a big plus as well. Most common vulnerabilities we don't have to worry about because they're continuously patched by Oracle. There's many aspects there. You know, one of the things we focus on was building in security for on, and you know, we do that in a lot of different products and services. And I'm kind of curious, um, you know, the benefits that you see or your end customers see you know, from the, the security that Oracle's actually built in. Yeah, you know, your security by design premise was really a great process transition that's helped, helped kind, of, kind of get customers signed off on using Oracle Cloud Platform. The cloud first approach, tiered security defenses that you created, the security tooling, and all the different tendencies as included by default, highly protected operations. Customers reduced their risks by the threats from security first design principles and through you know, tenant isolation and least privilege access. All these play a big role in coming up with the final solution for the customer. On the threat side of things, I know we've, you know, we've done a lot, uh, you talked about the Oracle Cloud infrastructure and some of our services. Um, you know, things you've seen that are helping you deal with sort of the threat environment for your customers. So it's always you know, 
keep things secure from kind of inside out. But we've also, you know, it's important to defend against threats and understand what what an organization is facing. Yeah, that's right. You know, the the benefit again is with Accenture's background, we do have a cyber defense organization through acquisition of Semantic Cyber Services. But one of the lessons we've learned when migrating the cloud is that we can utilize, I should say, this is specific to Oracle. Oracle's introduced the CASB and security zones with the zero cost. That alone kind of reduces security posture for many clients because the biggest, I would say, the causes for poor security compliance is poor configuration changes. We've given the customer all the security background and technology stack, but they potentially have open configurations in many different cases. This is where CASB comes in, alerting and notifying customers of poor configurations. And then also the max security zones, for instance, we can guarantee that no configuration changes happen in that area space that nothing changes and we know that things that are going to be internet, entering that system will be guaranteed not to be exposed. For maybe a final question, um, most customers, you know, they have a, their cloud is a journey. They're moving from on-premises into cloud. And I'm curious what you've seen from hybrid deployments and how you and Accenture or and maybe even in combination with Oracle have helped customers, you know, move these on-premises technologies into the cloud and particularly when they kind of have a, perhaps a, a toe and, you know, both on-premises and cloud. Yeah, so hybrid deployments is definitely something customers do as a first step. They, they go low tier solutions, low cost solutions that are not of the highest criticality in their business processes. They try to migrate them over. Part of that also is a benefit for them to understand what steps will be required during that migration. But again, you know, when they look at cloud deployments, everyone looks at workload offloading. Personally, at Accenture, we look at the company's data flows, as I mentioned earlier, and security of the data assets. This is where Oracle really shines. Oracle being an enterprise data management company leader for decades, we know and we can the customers can trust that the data that's being migrated to Oracle will be secured and will have all the safeguards needed to secure their data. So that being the first part of the formula of the migration, we think about, think about the data, how long it'll take, and the different challenges they're gonna have about migrating and cleaning up the data. This is another thing customers forget is that they'll have old data sitting on their systems that necessarily doesn't need to migrate to the cloud, kind of worrying about the potential cost savings there, as well as not having to worry about data that's from antiquated systems and easily can migrate to newer technology stacks. For Ron, this has uh, been Greatly beneficial. Thanks for sharing your insights and experiences as you've been helping customers migrate the cloud. It's great to hear the, the customer you know, stories live from the streets. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Fred. I want to say thank you for spending time with Oracle at RSA, albeit virtual this year. No wondering the halls of Moscone are trouncing up and down Howard Street. But if we've talked about today, piqued your interest and you want to learn more, check out the virtual booth and I'll call your attention to three specific things. You can check out a demo of the cloud infrastructure security, database security, or the identity and access management products in the booth, or you can learn more from assets there. Second thing, you can actually have a Q&A chat with an expert at Oracle to talk about any of these products and solutions you heard about today. And finally, if you want to go further, you can schedule an appointment for a deeper conversation outside the virtual realm. So thank you again for joining. You can learn more at oracle.com security or simply search Oracle security. Thanks for joining.